Hello, my name is Moon Shin. I'm a senior art history major at Wesleyan University. So this piece of textile you see here is a pair of sleeve bands before it was mounted onto a garment. You'll see the embroidery is worked to only one part of the band, with the rest left unembellished. Sleeve bands were sewn to the sleeves with the embroidered part to the back and the unembroidered part to the front. So this makes the cuff front plain while the back cover with embroidery. That's because Chinese tended to fold their arms in front at waist level with their hands through the sleeves, the embroidery showing down the front. Although this part of sleeve bands boasts elaborate embroidery, they were not designed simply as decoration. Well, in fact, every detail conveys a meaning to those who look at them and actually wear them. The large peony at the center of the design commands our attention. In Chinese symbolism, this flower has been endowed with the meanings of opulence and good fortune. A number of lotus flowers surrounds the peony, representing fruitfulness and purity. The lotus is commonly described as a flower growing out of the mud and remaining undefiled. On the lower left corner, there is the endless knot, which is one of the Buddhist eight auspicious symbols, which refers to longevity of human life. So all these propitious symbols can be interpreted as a hint of a pleasant air of good fortune to people who wear them. Hi, my name is Leah Monti, and I'm a freshman at Wesleyan University. In Japan, Hayori jackets are traditionally worn by men at formal occasions such as New Year's, weddings, or coming-of-age ceremonies. The colors blue and black are often used for these types of jackets. The rich designs were commonly dyed into the silk fabric through the classic Japanese yuzen method. In this process, a dyeing master called the sencho would use flower juice, sticky rice glue, and bean juice paint to create detailed designs. This produced such beautifully detailed fabrics that the technique dominated Japanese textile production until the introduction of synthetic dye in the 1860s. The most elaborate and interesting components of the haori are on the interior of the jackets. The blue haori is decorated with lilies, while the black haori is decorated with chrysanthemums. The chrysanthemums, which are symbols of the imperial court, suggests that the black harori is more formal. Other notable details of the hororis are five crests located on the front and back sides of the jackets, as well as the two sleeves. These are mons, or Japanese family symbols, which exhibit status and pride. The blue horori mon meaning is represented by the flowers and is gosan no kiri, meaning 5-3. Despite the beauty of the horori, the mon identifies the family as relatively common in status. Hi. My name is Conan Chong. I'm a sophomore at Wesleyan University. In the rigid power hierarchy of the Qing court, rank badges adorning the front and back of court robes served as a prominent visual indication of the status of the bearers. The predominant black colour and square shape of this particular rank insignia designates it for use by military and civil officials. Interestingly, while the pheasants featured in the insignia are golden, which would denote a civil official of the second grade, Instead of the two long tail feathers that are characteristic of that rank, it bears five, which denotes an official of the fifth grade. This misconstruction is telling of the workmanship of the unknown artisan who made the robe. Pheasants generally represent beauty, good fortune, and literary refinement in Chinese iconography. Hello, my name is Brian Lau. I'm a sophomore at Wesleyan University. The large Chinese character forming the eight large roundels on the front and back of the row is a stylized calligraphy rendition of the Chinese character for longevity, Shou. The smaller one patterning the bulk of the row is the same character written differently. Along with the character are bats. In Chinese, the word for a bat and for good fortune are both pronounced fu. Besides characters, homophones and puns are used to symbolize good fortune and happiness and this is still a common practice in China nowadays. Finally, the diagonal stripes and rounded billows along the hem of the rope symbolize the universal ocean surrounding the earth, with a legendary mountain of longevity erupting from the middle of it. Taken together, the coast decorations summon up a whole range of auspicious symbols.